Welcome to sit down news. Or shall I say, welcome to sit down news. <laughs> Unbelievable. Anyway, I am going to speak about a story I wrote back in November of last year titled A Shot in the Dark and a Smack in the Face. So in 1992, November of 1992, a Lincoln town car had come to a stop on Caldwell Avenue in Maspeth, Queens. Inside that car were members of the Columbo crime family as well as associates. And their car was cut off by a U-Haul van and two other cars, kind of boxed them in. Guys jumped out with Halloween masks on, uh, firing into the Lincoln with pistols and they shotgun. Um, one of the targets and intended targets was a guy by the name of uh, Vinny Unions. And he was shot in the back. Another guy inside the car was Anthony Messi. He died from his injuries. And the third guy was also shot and survived. And these guys, after doing the shooting, they left the U-Haul and these other cars running with the windshield wipers on. I, I believe it was raining, obviously. And they jumped into a waiting getaway car and they took off. One of the shooters, and it came out, one of the shooters that night was Vito Guzzo. And I spoke about Vito before. Vito is the brother, half-brother of Anthony Guzzo. And this, this shooting was done in revenge of the disappearance, disappearance of Vito Guzzo Sr., which is Anthony and Vito's father, who, uh, after a hunting trip in 1987, was never seen again. And it surprised, unsurprisingly, uh, one of the guys that he went hunting with was Vinnie Unions. And some of the other shooters were identified as Anthony Tabita, who they call Babyface Tabita, and was a friend of obviously Vito Guzzo and uh, Joseph Joel Kane. Joel Kane was from, from my neighborhood. I went to high school with Joe and he was identified as a shooter. He was identified as the guy with the shotgun, as a matter of fact. And Anthony Tabita had uh, subsequently went on to become a government cooperator after he was indicted for several murders. And unfortunately, Joel Kane um, was indicted in 1999 for racketeering and murder charges, was convicted, sentenced to life, and ultimately on, uh, in April of 2010, he was stabbed to death at the federal prison McKean. And just give me a minute, catch up. So, cousin Usher, one of the rules, and it's a common known rule, is that no one is to ever put their hands on a friend or as people know them as a made member. And that act is punishable by death. But sometimes, you know, rules are overlooked, as, as with anything in life. And on September 14th, 1998, Vito pled guilty to several, several murders, um, and he had received a 38-year 38, 38 sentence. He actually could have got 21 years, and on, under the advice of his legal counsel at the time, he was told not to take that. And the government then pushed it to 40. He changed lawyers, I remember his brother telling me, and the lawyer begged the government just give us something on the 40. They came up with the number 38 and he took it. But Vito would have been out a long time ago had he took that 21 year, 21 year sentence. Um, in 2014, they, the Columbos had a street boss named Ralph DeLeo and he had just been starting his sentence. It was a 19 year sentence that he received about two years prior, 2012, for racketeering. And he ended up at a federal prison in Danbury. 
while there, Vito Guzzo also was in the, in the prison in Danbury, they became friendly. And um, what was happening to um, uh, Ralphie DeLeo was that the other guys and specifically wise guys in, in Danbury in the prison were alienating him. Um, there was a wire, which means that there was a rumor out on him that he was no good. He was a rat, according to what they were saying about him. And um, so Vito Guzzo decided that he was going to step in and told uh, the Leo that he was going to reach out to the street and put a stop to all of this. But it will come at his cost, and we'll get to that in a minute. So Vito was complaining to Anthony at the time, and Anthony was telling me, we go up to see Vito. Vito was very upset because when he was around these guys and wise guys in the prison, they would naturally excuse him when they wanted to talk because he wasn't a friend. So they would excuse Vito and say, excuse us. We got to, you know, we need to talk. Well, could you give us a minute? We got to go talk. And he, he did not like that. They were, he was being excused like that. And with that being said, he brought this story to Anthony that he wanted to send the message out to the street and find out where this um where the colombo family felt that the leo stood was he in their good graces or was the rumor um not true so anthony met with me after he seen his brother got in touch with me that he wanted to see me and he had on a piece of paper the name ralph the leo and he explained this whole story to me and he wanted me to go speak to um, Sally, Be Sally Brett. Sally Brett Cambria at that time was the acting street boss for the Columbos. And we all got along with Sal. He stood in my family's restaurant, Spallini's, which is located in Kew Gardens, Queens on Metropolitan Avenue. He, Sal was there all the time with his crew. So I did take the paper from Anthony and I did go to Spallini's and I did see Sal and I gave him the paper and I told him this whole story and he told me that he would get back to me you know with an answer and a couple of days later or three four days later whatever it was I got a message to come to Spallini's I went to Spallini's I seen Sal again and Sal told me that the, as far as the Colombo's family felt he was in good standings and that was only a rumor and it's a false rumor that the Leo was in fact not a rat. And it just goes to show you how, why is it put on people? But anyway, I met with Anthony and relayed that message back to, um, to Anthony. And Anthony said that he was obviously gonna go up and see his brother the following weekend and give that message back. And so what happens is that Vito brought that message back into the prison and spread it around everybody in the prison, which may, obviously made the Leo's, uh, Ralphie the Leo's life a lot easier in the prison. Now that guys were not going to treat him like uh, an outcast. About two weeks later, I ran back into Sally Bread in Spallini's and he called me over and he said, I, I want to let you know. I want to thank you for sending that message back. He said, and that kid Vito, meaning Vito Gozo, sent a message to him to somebody else and was asking Sal's permission if it was okay that he gets straightened out in the prison. I, I, I at that time did not know that they could do that. And ultimately, obviously, that was uh, Vito Gozo's goal by helping uh, Ralphie DeLeo get take the wire off of him and have him treated accordingly in the prison, he would now be inducted inside the prison. I never, and I, I admit this, I never heard of this. I never heard that that could be done. At this time, I might've been in the life as, as an inducted member. I, I don't know. I, I, was, I was new to the life as far as an inducted member. And, um, but to go on with the story, one day after all of this, I was up at the club in the Bronx, which was an, a Lucchese social club on Coddington Avenue in the Bronx. And 
I mentioned this whole story to our consigliere at the time, Joe DiNapoli. And Joe DiNapoli told me, he said, he like smiled. He knew I obviously didn't know about this. He said, first of all, we don't, we don't do that. You know, going to the bathroom, he said, and doing something like that is an insult to this whole thing, which he meant by this whole thing is Cosa Nostra. And he said, the only time that our family had something like this done was gas pipe one time did this on his own in MCC. And I think if you guys know about the story, gas pipe straightened the guy out in the bathroom in MCC. And, um, but ultimately he said, you know, we don't have to recognize, recognize, recognize this guy if he comes out because they did it that way. And he was obviously against, against all of that. And, um, but the, the strange thing about this whole thing is that Vinnie Unions lived through this attempted hit on himself. And um, I believe now he's a skipper. I, I don't know if that's true or not, but I know he's at least a friend. And it will be strange that when, um, when Vito ultimately comes home, he's gonna have interactions <laughs> where he's got to be introduced to his Vinny unions. Meanwhile, he went to go clip the guy and uh, the guy wound up living. But that, that is the end of that story. So I hope that you at least enjoyed the story. It was a previous one that I wrote. I wanted, I'm trying to catch up to them. Um, I'll put a link down below for anyone who has not read the story, you could read that. If you would like to subscribe to this channel, you could do that down below. And I hope that everyone is remaining um, positive and, um, you know, we live in a world where unfortunately people uh, concentrate on the negative and, um, you know, so be it, everybody to each his own, as they say. But we'll keep pushing forward and bringing you more content. I hope you enjoyed the little I had to say on this. I just tried to elaborate a little bit more and I hope you enjoy your night. I'm going to go enjoy mine. Ciao.